Hello everyone and Namaskar. So today's podcast is a continuation of the reading of the book titled Anandamurti, the Jamalpur Years. And this is a reading of the 22nd chapter titled To the Patriots. A sadhaka is verily a soldier. The pricks of thorns on the difficult path signify one's progress. The collective welfare of the universe is the crown of laurels of one's victory. In October 1959, during the Durga Puja holidays, Baba conducted a DMC in Kirnahar, a large village in Birbhum district, a few kilometers from Indus, where Sachinandan had organized a DMC two years earlier. The DMC was held in the local high school, as he had done the previous year in Amra. Baba asked the Margis to stage a Kabigan performance during the first night. In the afternoon, he called a group of Margi artists together and explained to them why Kabigan was such an ideal vehicle for Prachar in the village life of Bengal. Then he coached them on how to present the ideology within the context of the art form. About nine o'clock, the musicians gathered outside and began beating the drums. A signal to all the villages within earshot that a kavigan was about to take place. The villagers, who by then had finished their dinners, followed the drums to the open area chosen for the performance. The artists split into two parties and began staging a musical debate, firing improvised questions and answers back and forth at one another, in the form of traditional melodic stanzas, each party with their own instrumentalists supporting the singing debaters. One party represented an Anamarga ideology. The other represented the old rituals. Over 5,000 people from the surrounding villages turned up for the performance, which lasted until well after dawn. As in Amra, the year before, the local villagers will continue to talk about it for months afterward, often singing the songs they heard that night as they worked in the fields. During the DMC program, the high school grounds were roped off and only margies were allowed to enter. But loudspeakers were placed outside so that interested villagers could listen to Bava's discourses. This created a reaction in the large Samandar family that owned vast tracts of land in the area and controlled most village affairs, especially when they insisted on speaking to Baba but were not allowed. On the evening of the second day, while Baba was doing sadhana before his discourse, some smoke bombs exploded in his room. When the disciples burst through Baba's door immediately afterward, they found him standing on his cot, engulfed by smoke. Baba assured them, that he was not hurt and indicated that the bombs had been thrown in through the open window. The organizers held a hurried meeting and while Baba gave his discourse, they conducted a rapid investigation. All evidence pointed toward several younger members of the Samandar family. When they reported this to Baba after his discourse, he explained to the angry Margis that this was the Samandar family's reaction after being excluded from the DMC. We have a system, Baba told them, and we cannot go against this system. But we can invite some representatives to come and meet me. When Shitij and others objected, Baba said, There are good people among them, and when we do prachar here, in the future, some of them will come forward. The next day, some of the elder members of that family came to apologize for the incident and the invitation was extended to them. A short while later, they were ushered into Baba's room, where some blankets had been spread for them to sit on. Baba politely requested them to ask him whatever they wished, but no one said anything. Whatever you would like to know, I would be happy to tell you. Baba continued, but no one uttered even a single word. Well then, If you have any questions in the future, there are very knowledgeable acharyas in this area 
who will be more than happy to answer them. Afterward, when the other members of the family and prominent members of the village questioned them, all they would say was, He is a good man. We should leave him alone and not disturb him. The next morning, Baba announced unexpectedly that he would give his DMC talk at 10 a.m. instead of at night as originally scheduled. All Margis, without exception, were to leave by the afternoon train. Rush preparations were made for Baba's discourse, and after lunch, the Margis left as instructed. After their return to Jamalpur, a group of senior disciples held a meeting to discuss matters of Baba's security. The incident in Kirnahar was relatively minor, but with Baba's emerging reputation as a social activist, it was evident that they could not go any longer without making some arrangements for his protection. They decided to organize a group of volunteers to act as bodyguards during field walks and DMCs. In addition, the volunteers could also provide security for the Margis during collective functions, as the number of people attending programs continued to increase. So did the possibility of unforeseen disturbances. They brought the proposal to Baba, who told them that the Margis' decision would be his decision. They named the new group VSS, Vishwa Shanti Sena, the Universal Peace Force. Baba soon amended it to Volunteer Social Service, preserving the same initials. He also gave instructions that the volunteers should be given training in disaster relief and other types of social service activities, in addition to security training. Nityananda was elected commander-in-chief, and a training camp was planned for December in Ranchi, before the scheduled DMC, during which the new wing would be officially inaugurated. In the meantime, a DMC was held in Gorakhpur in November. Afterward, Baba was invited by the Allahabad University Department of Philosophy to give a lecture for faculty and graduate students. It was the only time in Baba's life that he would give such a public lecture. The topic was mind and vital energy. The head of the department, R. N. Kaul, was so impressed by the talk that after Baba left the stage, he told the audience that in his opinion, Ananda Murti was one of the three greatest personalities to ever walk the soil of India. In early December, the volunteers met in Bagalpur for a training session with Margi members of the Bihar military police, including Chandranath, who was superintendent of the BMP training center in nearby Natnagar. Baba arrived in Bagalpur one evening during the training. The next morning, Chandranath brought him to the parade grounds shortly before sunrise. As the sun inched toward the horizon, the new volunteers marched in front of Baba in the chill air. He took their salute from the dais, then came down the steps and inspected them from one end to the other. When he was finished with the inspection, he gave a short talk, offering some words of encouragement and telling them that they should use their life to do service to others. For this, they should keep their bodies healthy, eat well, and stay physically fit. A few weeks later, a seven-day VSS camp began in Ranchi, with approximately 50 volunteers attending from different parts of India. A strict routine was instituted for the camp, with set times for collective meditation, ideology classes, and training sessions. Collectively, they drew up a code of discipline for the volunteers, a list of duties, and worked on a design for the VSS uniform and the VSS flag. Baba visited the camp on the opening day and gave an informal talk. As one Margi who attended recounted, it seemed as if a lion was roaring when he spoke. The wave that passed through us made us feel that we could have jumped from the tallest tree had Baba wanted. It was a Vita Bawa. 
He told us that we would be benefited by the battle for Dharma, no matter what happened. If we died, then we would get liberation. And if we survived, then we would enjoy the victory of Dharma. The next day, we went to the Ranchi field, and Baba took our salute beneath the flag. After leaving the camp, Baba stopped in Barhi for lunch, where he met Ram Bahadur. Ram Bahadur was on his way to the camp and requested Baba to send a message for the volunteers. The message Baba wrote out would, for many of his disciples, embody the spirit of ESS. As a soldier, you must not search for worldly pleasure or comfort. Be ready for all sorts of sufferings. Let suffering be your asset. Suffering will help you in establishing the Sadbipra Samaj. You must not argue. You must not think twice. You should do or die. I do not want to see the face of my defeated sons and daughters in flesh and blood. Yours affectionately, Baba. From then on, at least one volunteer would always be present with Baba during larger programs such as DMC. The free access that the Margis had had to Baba, especially in Jamalpur, slowly became a thing of the past. Not all the disciples liked it, but everyone understood its necessity. As a new decade was ushered in, so was a new stage in the development of Ananda Marga. As Baba prepared his disciples, to step more and more into the public eye. Before the VSS camp, Baba visited Ranchi for a few days and gave general darshan for the Margis in Birla boarding. The program began with Natkat Kedar performing Arati and singing a devotional song to welcome Baba. Baba, come into the temple of my heart and unveil to me your face. If you go from here, it would become a lonely wasteland. Our relationship is just like that of a spark and fire. It is you who are burning in this body, like a flame. Come, come into my heart. The Margis began weeping, and the devotion of fervor continued unabated for the next four days. In the meantime, a large tent was erected on the grounds of the Ranchi Jagrati, which was by then nearing completion. Baba inspected the construction and conducted DMC under the tent. After the DMC, Akori brought his car to take Baba back to Jamalpur. Shitij sang a song about the loneliness of Braj after Krishna's departure. And the Margis began crying so bitterly that they laid down in front of Baba's car and refused to let him leave. Baba himself started weeping softly and had to wipe the tears with his handkerchief. He requested Shitij not to sing anymore. Otherwise, he said, he would not be able to control himself. Don't cry, he told everyone. I will be back soon. In the meantime, work sincerely for the mission. Eventually, the new volunteers were able to convince the Margis to clear the road so Baba could leave. But the weeping continued even after Baba's car had disappeared from sight. A few days later, Baba informed Pranay that the Margis and Ranchi were still in an abnormal state, crying and unwilling to eat. He asked them to go there for a week to console them, which he did, but only with partial success. In early February, Baba returned to Ranchi. Only then, did the Margis return to normal. On the 1st of January, Baba gave his biannual Are You Address, this time as part of the Progressive Writers Conference, which was organized at Jamalpur under the aegis of RU. It was entitled To the Patriots and was published shortly thereafter as a separate book. As had been the case with Problem of the Day, The discourse began with a historical analysis of the factors that gave rise to the nation-state. It focused primarily on the long history of the Indian subcontinent and the rise and fall of different nations within the subcontinent over the course of various millennia. 
after showing that the first true expression of pan-Indian nationalism arose due to the creation of anti-British exploitation sentiment, Baba analyzed the fundamental mistakes made by Indian leaders during the decades of the freedom movement and the years immediately following independence. When, as a result of anti-British sentiment, the Indian nation was formed in the 19th century, the then leaders of India should have started a struggle for economic independence instead of launching a political movement. All Indians could have fought together unitedly, there being no Hindu, Muslim, Punjabi, or Marathi feelings in this economic struggle. And as a result, an anti-exploitation sentiment could have been developed in India. This sentiment could have made Indians stronger. If there had been no fight for political independence, the fear that Muslims would have to remain under the suzerainty of the Hindus after the independence of India could not have crept into their minds. In the absence of Hindu phobia, there would have been no demand for the homeland of the Muslim nation. And when India would have gained economic independence, Hindus and Muslims would have lived together as brothers and sisters in an undivided India. The fight for economic independence would have brought political independence also. There might have been some delay in it, but political independence would have surely come. Baba then accused the leaders of that time of purposely avoiding the struggle for economic independence for several reasons. One being that they themselves were members of the bourgeois class and had a vested interest in keeping capitalism alive. He analyzed the mistakes they committed during the formation of the new nation and made a sovereign prediction. The little bond of unity which existed in Indian society is going to be spoilt by the unwise actions of these leaders. The three great lapses which are going to destroy the unity of India are the effort to demarcate provincial boundaries on a linguistic basis, the question of national language, and the use of local languages as a medium of instruction in higher education. After analyzing in detail the problems inherent in the governmental policies taken by the new nation in these three areas, Baba proposes solutions for the creation of a strong and exploitation-free India. As usual, the spotlight shone on the question of economic liberation. Most of the people in India are poverty-stricken. They want to be free from exploitation. Political independence has no value for them if it cannot give them economic independence. After pointing out that anti-exploitation sentiment cannot be sustained forever, Baba ended his talk on a spiritual note, reflective of the spiritual basis of his social philosophy. One cosmic ideology will have to be propagated. And that ideology is that one supreme entity, the cosmic entity, is the goal of all living beings. This spiritual sentiment will keep human beings united for all time to come. No other theory can save the human race. Not long after this discourse, Baba launched a new movement aimed at addressing some of the problems he had pointed out in his discourse and in Prout classes, especially one that he felt quite strongly about, the partition of Bengal. One day, he called Nityananda and asked him to begin setting up a new organization that would have no link with Ananda Marga. He gave it the name Amra Bengali, We Are Bengalis, and explained that it would focus on combating the various types of exploitation affecting the Bengali people. Its long-term goal would be the reunification of the Sundar Bengal into a politically and economically independent region, in parentheses, now West Bengal in Bangladesh. He told Nityananda and Baladai Da, who agreed to be its first secretary, that one day East and West Bengal would be reunited 
and that Amra Bengali would play a critical role in that process. Though the progress of Amra Bengali would be slow during the first years of its existence, it would gradually gather steam and become a well-known and influential movement in Bengal in the years to come. Baba's frank undressing of the mistakes made by Indian leaders in the recent past, many of them still in power at the time, and his unforgiving analysis of the present government's policies served not only as an added chapter to his newly disseminated Prao teachings, but also as a reminder to the Margis why the creation of ESS and the new security measures surrounding Baba were an idea whose time had come. While the rest of To the Patriots was dedicated to Baba's proposals for rectifying the problem engendered by the ill-conceived policies of India's leaders, the sting of his criticisms was not easily overlooked, nor did it pass unnoticed by the young proudest who were looking to Baba for guidance on the path of social reform. Throughout its history, India has shown itself to be all-embracing in its acceptance of spiritual teachers, but much less welcoming when it came to social revolutionaries. The combination of the two had never been seen before to an appreciable extent. And already, some of the more far-sighted disciples were beginning to grow concerned over what the future might bring. Thank you.